So I've been playing the Electric State religiously for the past week or so, and in that time I've encountered many a new player seeking my wisdom on how to start out. Fortunately, I wrote a four-page script for this specific occasion back in February, so this should be easy. Nope, sorry bud, the game's just been massively overhauled. We changed the entire map, removed a quarter of the jobs, redid the sales system, and reset everyone's money and inventory, so you have to start back at square one. A positive effect of this update is that I've had to improvise, adapt, and overcome the obstacles placed before me to be successful again, which means I'm speaking from recent experience. We only use the freshest ingredients here at Skit Gaming. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So you get plopped into the middle of a post-apocalyptic wasteland with no friends, no instructions, and only $5,000 to your name. You have to be shrewd to survive here. Good thing you sought out my sage advice. First, let's go over basic controls. You got your WASD, your spacebar to jump, and the shift key to sprint. Push G to display your inventory, which includes your stored items, cars, upgrades, and more. Hitting Q will toggle a fixed third-person mode. This is handy for combat. To access the menu, press T. The first tab in the menu is labeled Jobs. Here you can select the occupation you'll have. Next is the Shop tab. This is where you buy ammunition, money printers, and other products. The Rules tab used to just display the Ten Commandments, which nobody even tried to follow, but now it gives you some quick tips. You will never visit this tab on purpose. Finally is the Actions tab, which you'll probably end up using the most. We'll talk about the options here later. Remember this, because if you don't, it will haunt you for the rest of your days. Your hotbar does not save when you die or leave the server. If you want to keep an item, put it in your inventory by dropping the item with H, then hitting V on it. You'll thank me later. Let's start off in the Jobs tab, which you probably saw when you first loaded in. A good job to start out as is the farmer. Scroll down to the income section and select that occupation. You'll be respawned in your new role. Now, one needs to grow crops in order to be a farmer, so you need a plot of land to call your own. Press B to open the build menu and navigate to the All tab. There will be an item at the top of the list called a node. Upon selection, a large transparent cube will appear centered on your cursor. Find a spot where your node doesn't touch anyone else's and click to place it down. The node functions as the barrier of your build. Anything you place has to be inside of the cube, and no one else can build things in your node without permission. To start off your grand career in agriculture, click into the production tab of the build menu. Select corn farm and place a few down. Next, place a capital cargo station. Finally, exit the build menu and plant your crops by mousing over the farms and hitting E. Once you're done with the build, navigate to the Actions tab of the menu and find the Building section. Click the Save slash Load Building button and save your build in at least one slot. This ensures that after you leave the server, you can come back and load your build without having to place everything down again. It'll take a few minutes for your crops to grow, so you should explore the town and see what shops are available. If you want to boost your income, you can travel to the scrapyard near town and salvage some old cars. Carry the scrap to the capital cargo station on your node to sell it. Once your corn is fully grown, you can harvest it and sell it through your cargo station. Congratulations! You've taken your first step into a larger world. I'm so proud of you. So, maybe you're tired of living the dull, solitary life of a farmer, and you want to make it in the big city instead. Fortunately for you, the Electric State is a land of opportunity. You can sell guns, run a bar, sell big guns, and so much more. All of the real merchant classes share the same purchasing system, so I'll go over how that works. Pause! Almost forgot. If you're new, don't be the doctor, and please, please do not be the banker. It's for your own good. Alright, resume the video. Selling cola as the bartender is a pretty common and stable job, so let's use that as an example. In order to make your product, you'll need a specific set of resources. Materials used to craft the product spawn in certain locations around the map. In this case, we need to use grapes to create cola. Once you acquire the grapes, use the job-specific production item to process the grapes into a shipment of Bloxy Cola. Now that you've got your final product, stand near a register on your node and sell your merchandise to customers. You can also place your product in a dispenser so that people can buy it even when you aren't around. The combat system of the Electric State is relatively simple. There are three categories of combatants, characterized by the color of their name tags. Players have a white name by default, which means that they can only damage people with red names. 
You can toggle PvP, or flag up, by going to the roleplay section of the actions menu and clicking toggle PvP. This will turn your white name to yellow and vice versa. A yellow name means that you can damage anybody, but if you do attack someone, your name turns red. Like the yellow player, a red name can damage anyone they so choose. The only difference is that everyone else can damage a player with a red name. After acquiring a red name, you have to wait 60 seconds to get rid of it. The timer resets if you engage in any illegal activity before the effect wears off. Having a red name will attract the attention of everyone within a 30 yard radius, and most occupants of the wasteland have a very itchy trigger finger. Making it so they can take you down with no repercussions isn't the brightest idea. Because of this, you should try to prevent getting a red name if at all possible. The system also involves karma, which can be viewed in the actions menu. Killing passive players, lockpicking doors, planting C4, or having a money printer in your possession will all result in a red name and a loss of karma. If your karma drops below zero, you can no longer flag up and damage passive players. Lost karma regenerates slowly over time. In order to get cars, upgrades, and additional furniture, you need to open crates. These can be viewed using the catalog button in the bottom right corner of your screen. The only crate you can acquire as a new player is the scavenge crate. These are scattered around the map, and I only know a few locations where they might spawn. I have found crates under the bridge behind the theater, on the tables of the lumber factory, behind the sign near the church, in the entrance of the science building, and among the cars in the scrapyard. Once you pick up a loot crate, any others nearby will despawn. You can open the crate in the catalog, and if you're fortunate enough, you'll receive a scavenge station. This machine is essential to progressing in the game. Once you make at least 20k and place the station, you can use it to collect old world crates. These crates contain Aureus. Aureus? Aureus. Whatever, this purple stuff is the premium currency of the land, and you can use it to purchase the other crates and find all kinds of goodies. You can only use one drone every half hour, and there's a 10 hour cooldown after 6 uses. And that's just about it. Now you know the basics of survival in the wasteland. I'll leave the rest of the exploration and adventure to you. Stay alert, keep your hunger bar full, and if you happen to spot my shop out in the wasteland, make sure to drop by. Skit Gaming, signing out. Goodbye.